Hi guys, I'm Mel, and you're watching Just Ironic. Thank you so much for tuning into this video today. I will be covering what is sustainable fashion and the issues within fast fashion, so stay tuned. So let's start off by explaining what sustainable fashion is. You may be surprised to find out that sustainable fashion does not have a set definition. But what we can say is that sustainable fashion can mean a lot of different things. It can mean buying from sustainable fashion brands, it can mean buying from thrift stores or Vintage, hosting clothing swaps, it can mean even just reusing what's in your closet, and it's as simple as mending your clothing. So it is a very subjective definition for whoever takes up sustainable fashion, and it can be done in a lot of different ways. So no one way is the best way because with every single way coming together, we can truly become a sustainable fashion advocate. And to clarify, you do not need to be part of any organization or need to label yourself as anything or choose just one definition. You can do it in a very open-minded and open-ended way to however it fits you best in your lifestyle. However, your key focus should be sustainability. And this means reusing, repairing, and rewearing your clothing as much as possible. So it is very important that to be aware of sustainable fashion, you have to be aware of the issues in fast fashion. So now I will be explaining key issues within the fashion industry that you should be aware of so that you can be a better advocate for sustainable fashion. With the help of my notes, I will define fast fashion. So fast fashion is a term used to describe on-trend apparel that is rapidly produced by large fashion brands that are sold at a low price point. This rapid production of clothing does allow the price to go down so it's more accessible to a lot of consumers. However, there is so much consumption of fashion that is being sent to the landfill at such a rapid pace that the production is more harmful than beneficial. So one of the key issues I want to talk about first is our intention. When you're in H&M, what are your intentions to buying a shirt? Do you ever think about who made the shirt? Do you ever think about where the shirt was from? And do you think about the entire supply chain? So keep asking questions and be intentional about your purchases because you never know what else will make you curious. And this may seem a little bit vague and a little bit of a tunnel vision of like, what am I supposed to ask and how am I supposed to start? But it's intention. Intention is everything. As long as you're thinking, who made this? Where did it come from? What are the materials? How is this affecting the earth? That's literally one of the most powerful things you can do. And the issue is a lot of people are not asking. And that is because there is a lack of awareness. So you can watch the True Cost documentary, you can Google sustainable fashion or fast fashion, and there'll be loads of articles on that. Also, if you're more of a social media person, you can type in sustainable fashion or ethical fashion in the tag section of Instagram and you'll find a lot of influencers, bloggers, and organizations that will keep you up to date to the latest issues. You can follow Remake, you can follow the Clean Clothes campaign, you can follow Fashion Revolution, and you can also follow more radical organizations like XR Fashion Action, and those will be linked in my description if you want to find out more about them. But always stay intentional, and that is one of the biggest things that we're lacking within this issue. So now getting into more of the logistics, one of the biggest issues within fast fashion is the sweatshops that are perpetuated by the exploitation of government workers. Now this is caused because there are unethical trading agreements between governments that let the workers be exploited at a very low cost below minimum wage. Now what I'm saying is that underdeveloped governments actually agree with corporations from developed countries to have business contracts where they allow their citizens to be paid under minimum wage because they don't uphold their human rights nor establish any laws or policies that allow their workers to have a just jurisdiction that advocates on behalf of them. But I do want to provide you a definition of sweatshops. Sweatshops are defined as a shop or factory that violates wage, child labor, safety, and health laws. Sweatshops are used by fashion retailers based on the low cost economies where they can successfully compete by having the lowest cost. They source production where it's cheapest which pressures factory owners to cut cost. These factories are often located in third world countries with low governmental intervention in the garment industry. This causes disregard for safety measures 
and forces government workers to work more than 12 hours a day. It is common to not be paid the extra hours required to meet production quotas. In addition, employees work long hours at low wages, under minimum wage, and on healthy conditions. Also, it's important to note that most government workers are female, while managers and people in power are male. So this is very much a feminist issue where workers are subject to harassment based on a very patriarchal view. Another issue linked to sweatshops is unsafe working conditions. Now this is really prevalent in sweatshops because there isn't a lot of laws or policies allowed in factories to really foster a safe place. Sweatshop factories are actually located in old buildings where workers are crammed together and maybe there's not even bathrooms. Now another issue that's interconnected with sweatshops is that workers are not paid a living wage. With the help of my notes, a living wage is actually calculated by the cost of living in the local area, which determines the wage rate that allows the citizens to meet minimum standards of living. And this includes basic human needs like food, health care, education, clothing, and transportation. If apparel companies were to pay a fair living wage, they would allow their government workers to have a better life. It would allow them to break a cycle of poverty, which would allow their kids to go to school. It would allow them to have better living conditions. It would allow them to have savings and to not be massively indebted to a very bad economic system in an underdeveloped country. So finally, I want to talk about the health and safety risks involved when working in a sweatshop. And although there is more health and safety risks involved within the entire supply chain of the shirt production, I do want to zero down on the issues within sweatshops, specifically within this video, so it's a little bit more understandable. And if you want to see any more videos explaining the other aspects of the supply chain of a shirt that causes the issue of fast fashion, just let me know. It is a very complex and big topic to talk about, so I did not want to make this, this video too long for you. So I will just get into the health and safety risks of the sweatshop workers. So basically they are exposed to a lot of microfibers. If you don't know, clothes do give off little fibers in the air. And so if you're constantly working with a lot of clothing, you may be inhaling a lot of microfibers, can get into your lungs and clog that. So a lot of workers might have respiratory illnesses because of it. They're not exposed to clean air because the, the buildings are closed off with windows um, and so they may not have ever a chance to really refresh their oxygen through clean air because they're locked in a building all day for more than 12 hours a day. Also, they're subject to repetitive motions. Just imagine sitting for 12 hours sewing the same thing over and over and over again. And also, it's important to take notice that if you listen to a sewing machine, they are quite loud by themselves. And if you're crammed in a sweatshop full of, of sewing machines, that buzz can hurt your ears, especially after hours and hours and hours of hearing it. In addition, because workers are often female and the managers are male, they're subject to sexual, verbal, and physical abuse because they're in a position of vulnerability. Now this is really scary for government workers because if they lose their job, they won't have a source of income. They're often single mothers that are trying to raise their children. And so garment factories are really one of the only ways they can make a better living for themselves. And so they do have to withstand a lot of harassment from factory managers. And because there isn't a lot of unions and there isn't a lot of awareness of their rights, this just happens really often. And it's very sad to think about that their voices aren't heard. And so if you want to learn more about the conditions under which they're working and want to know more about them, Remake has an amazing platform that allows you to learn more about farmer workers and what you can do. So I'll also leave the information down in my description. Hopefully you like this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Comment them down below and feel free to subscribe. Take care guys. Bye.